Yep, Sri Chaitanya Charita Marta, Madhalila, chapter 8, text 6. Shri, yeah, it's written there. Madhalila, chapter 8, is famous for what? Who knows? Don't all shout at once. Ramananda Sambad. The quintessence of the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, delivered through the mouth of Ramananda Rai. But what we're going to read today has nothing directly to do with that. It's, uh, there's a little introduction before we get to the Ramananda Samvad. Samvad means conversation, discussion. Uh, it occurs as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is traveling in South India. So this is as he's on the way to South India at Simhachalam, I believe. Must be Simhachalam. Yeah, anyway, I didn't check it and see. Who's from Simhachalam? Someone here? Yeah, yeah, you're from Simhachalam. Yeah. So, let's read the verse. Ugraha Api Anugraha Eva Ayam Sva Bhaktanam Nri Keshari Keshari Eva Sva Potanam Anyesham Ugra Vikramaha Ogropyanugra evayam Svabhaktanam Rikeshari Keshari Vasvapotanam Anyesham Ugra Vikramaha Ugropyanugra evayam Svabhaktanang Rikeshari Keshari Vasvapotanam Anyesham Ugra Vikramaha Svabhaktanam Nikesha. Anyesham Uga Vikramaha. Gropi and Yoga Evayam. Svabhaktanam Nikeshari. Isharīva svapotānāṁ Anyesham ugra vikramaha Ugra pyanugra evāyam Svapaktānāṁ nrikeshari Kesharīva svapotānāṁ Anyesham Ugra Vikramaha. Ladies, ladies, please. Matajis. Ugra Pyanugra Evayam. Svabhaktanam Rikesari. Kesari Vasvapotanam. Anyesham 
Ograha. Ferocious. Api. Although. Anugraha. What does Anugraha mean? Don't look at the. What's the usual meaning of Anugraha? Favorable, kind, kind, like that. Srila Prabhupada has here chosen to translate it as an antonym of ferocious, or he's translated it as not ferocious. Not ferocious. Okay, you're supposed to repeat that. Eva, Eva. certainly. I am this Svabhaktanam to his pure devotees. Nrikeshari, having the body of a human being and a lion. Keshari, Eva, like a lioness. Sva. Potanam to her young cubs and Yesham to others Ugra What does it mean Ugra? Don't look. We just had it already once. Ferocious, very good. Vikramaha whose strength Translation Although very ferocious, the lioness is very kind to her cubs. Similarly, although very ferocious to non-devotees like Hiranyakashipu, Lord Nrishimhadev is very, very soft and kind to devotees like Prahlad Maharaj. Purport. This verse was composed by Sridha Swami in his commentary on the seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 9, Text 1. End of purport. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namasreshtam Manum Api Shachi Putram Atrasarupa Rupam Taz Yagajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavar Team Radha Kundam Garivaramaho Radhika Madhava Sham Prabto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tamnatosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavanscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishak Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Tomorrow, as you all know, is Nushinga Chaturdashi, the celebration of the appearance of Lord Nushimha Dev. So I've been asked to speak today about Lord Nushimha Dev, which is why. I chose this verse in relation to Lord Narasimha. Presumably in Mayapur, on appearance days of the Lord and his great devotees, it is almost expected that many pastimes will be related and maybe someone will find some pastime which no one has ever told before. Probably all the pastimes of Nishimha have already been found in the Puranas and narrated here. 
But you could still find some more new stories if you travel around in temples in South India. And there are new stories coming up all the time because Lord Narasimha, especially this Narasimha, <laughs> he's not a stone. He's an interactive deity. However, I don't plan here to speak on pastimes so much. I might do, let's see, but just uh, can ask Lord Narasimha Dev to inspire me to say something to glorify him. We can't glorify him without his potency as he, the frustrated Hiranyakashipu. Here we go to pastimes, but well-known pastimes. The frustrated Hiranyakashipu being unable to kill Prahlad, even demonstrating his complete might by which he, had, by which he Hiranyakashipu, had conquered the universe, in frustration, asked Prahlad, where do you get your power from? The power to resist me. And Prahlad said, I get my power from the same source that you do, from Lord Vishnu. So the power to speak comes from him. I just discussed that in a discussing the name Sarva Vagishvareshvara. The, the master, the Lord, Lord Vishnu is the master of all masters of speech. So it's by his mercy one can speak. Vagisha, yasya vadane, lakshme, yasya chavakshasi, yasya asta, hudeye samvit, tang nirshingamaham bhaje. We worship Lord Narasimha upon who, whose mouth, in whose mouth is Saraswati, Shuddha Saraswati, the goddess of speech. And on whose chest is Lakshmi. And whose heart is Samvit, pure consciousness. Speaking is a reflection of the consciousness. So if the consciousness is Krishna conscious, then one can speak about Krishna in a manner that is pleasing to him. Here in Mayapur, if we are to speak of Nirshimha Dev, then we must speak of Pankajangri Prabhu also, who was his first pujari and served Sri Narasimha Dev from the time he arrived until the time that Narasimha Dev called Pankajangri Prabhu to serve him eternally as just a continuation from here to there and no difference actually because Mayapur here and Mayapur there there's no difference. We see a difference. It's a spiritual world, here and there. So every, everyone will accept that, unless they're a real demon, they'll accept that Pankajangri Prabhu, yeah. By His grace, He revealed Nushimha Dev, the, the service to Nushimha Dev. But also, we should remember, and not everyone will agree with this, some might get very angry, at this, but actually Narasimha Dev was brought, he came here at the behest of the much maligned Bhavananda Goswami, as he was known at the time. So that shouldn't be forgotten also. Much as he is maligned, and we won't go into the history, but uh, after this temple, was, I don't know if you all know, even heard the history, this temple was attacked and the, the deities that Srila Prabhupada had worshipped throughout his life were taken by dacoits. 
Bhakti Raghav Maharaj, who had a lifelong bad leg, had his bad leg blown off. It was quite a scene. And then after that, Bhavananda, Prabhu, we say now, uh, he commissioned or that deity of Ugra Narasimha to come here. And there's quite a story, quite a few stories behind him. Even before he got here, he was burning things. So this verse is recited by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's why it's included here. Uh, one of the many verses that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited when he visited various temples, the uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami often states that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he offered many prayers to the deities wherever he went. So, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has chosen to include this particular prayer to Lord Nrsimha Dev in his Chaitanya Charitamrita. Otherwise, if you try to include everything, then already Krishna Skaviraj Goswami is saying that, well, my book's too big. I don't want to make it too big. That's the superficial reason why Chaitanya Bhagavat is not bigger, why the Antalila of Chaitanya Mahabharu is not there in Chaitanya Bhagavat, there may be more subtle reasons also why that is not included. Uh, <clears throat> but this, uh, even in describing this, the Antialila, the Chaitanya, particularly Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstasies in his mood of Radha pining for Krishna. We get some insights into that. But even one second of it, as Krishnadas himself describes, couldn't be, could not be described even in billions of yugas by Anantadev with unlimited mouths. It's inconceivable. What Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is feeling at one moment now he's in the mood of a devotee, servant devotee. That mood we have when we come to a temple. The mood of service. And Prahlad with Nrsimha is very much in that mood. He identifies himself when speaking to Lord Nrsimha as a servant. Yadi Dasyasi me kaman. He, he, he identifies himself as a servant. We can learn from the pastimes of Nrishimha Dev with Prahlad Maharaj how the relationship between the servant and the served. The served is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That, that is Savior Sevak Bhav. This is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. As the feelings between the servant and the served. In material dealings, Servant and served is on the basis, well, especially at the present time, it's on the basis of payment. You get paid for doing the job. And the servant may not even know who he's serving. If you're in a big multinational company, I don't know. I never worked for a multinational company. I guess you could say ISKCON is, but it's not really the same. 
I don't know. If you're working, in, you, you didn't work in a multinational company either, did you? You did. Did you happen to know who owned it, who was on the board, and all this kind of thing? Maybe you were you were all in the higher echelons. You were maybe moving with them. But not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. Did you did you know the names of the people who are your ultimate bosses? Ultimate. In, in a few, few months or years. In a few months or years. So you had been working for such and such a person or persons, and you didn't even know their name. And even if you did know their name, that would be it. There's no question of any relationship. The relationship is you do your job under your immediate superior and you get paid. And if they're not satisfied with their work, they kick you out. Or, if you're, or you may just hop jobs trying to find a better job, what they call a better job. I, hmm. There's no relationship there. It may be that uh, the worker is, is, if he has any kind of feeling toward the boss, is cynical. The kind of thing you don't express publicly. That would have been different, ideally, in uh, Varnashram society, here in Bengal. The British instituted the Zaminda system, Jomida, here in Bengal, North India, throughout India. The la little kings owning large tracts of land. Actually, even before that, we see Raghunath Das, his family, they were also in it. Well, they were tax similar situation under the Turkish government. <clears throat> So, the servants, they wouldn't be paid, but they would be maintained. Uh, something like that went on re un until recently in India, just like payment would be given to the servants in the house and in Diwali, on Diwali the women give a sari or something like that. But nowadays they just give them some money, it's just all just money, like that. So there's some, some reciprocation. These servants are treated like uh, not, family, not family members in the sense that they have the full rights or anything like that, but they're maintained. They know their place. They know what they have to do. They're maintained like that. And there may be some... Uh, ideally, there should be some affection there also. And generally, there was. Because the servants, after all, they, be, they get to know intimately everything about the master. The relationship between the Supreme Lord and his servant is very intimate. More intimate than that is, than that is possible between a servant in this material world and his master. The Supreme Lord has nothing to gain from the service of his servants. And the servants, if they weren't in transcendental consciousness, would think, what have I got to gain here? People ask us that, don't they? What, what, are, you, what are you working? Why, why, are you, why are you in this Krishna consciousness? They're exploiting you. you. You should be earning money. You're, a, you're an intelligent young man. You should be out there earning money. And they've just got you working and they don't even pay you anything. Well, nowadays, you could get paid in ISKCON also. I mean, you get a good job. But ideally, you shouldn't be paid. As I wrote in that Brahmachari book, long hours, we'll, we'll give you a job. Unemployed? We'll give you a job. Long hours, hard work, no pay. But what is the pay? What is that? Betan more dear? Prem don bina? 
মরে দরিদ্র জীবন দাস করে মরে বেতন দিয়া প্রেম ধন চৈতন্য মহাপ্রভুজ প্রেজ না ধনম না জানম না সুন্দর দ্যাট উইদাউট প্রেম ধন দ্য ওয়েলস অফ প্রেম মাই আই এম সিম্পলি ইম্পভরিশ মাই লাইফ ইজ সিম্পলি ইম্পভরিশ সো হি ইজ প্রেইং টু কৃষ্ণ that making me your servant give me the wages of prem dhan so the devotees are the, we get our payment we should get our payment but it's not a, it's not calculative how much do i get the devotee simply wants to serve and the lord very kindly showers love on the devotee there's no reason for the lord to love his devotees so why does he love his devotees if there's no reason huh? sorry i can't hear The devotees love the Lord, but I'm asking why does he love them? He's got nothing to gain from them. Well, I just said there is no reason, so asking you what's the reason? <laughs> there is no reason. There's no reason you can calculate and work it out and put it in black and white. It's his nature. It's just his nature. Why does the lioness love the cubs? Here we have description of nrsimha dev compared to the lion who loves the cubs if you ask a mother why she loves her children it would seem to be a, a ridiculous question why does she love her children why do you love your children why there's no answer you just do that's all it's just is is nothing to think about or try to rationalize you you love your children it's inherent in the nature of a mother to love her children in the same way it's inherent in the nature of the lord to love his devotees his love is what he's all about that's what he's all about the analogy here of the lion and the lion cubs there's a great difference between the lion and the lion cubs the lion cubs are dependent and the lion is the protector and the maintainer the provider the lion has got nothing to gain from the lion cubs but out of natural affection the mother is ready to give her life for the child we'll see that in different species that the mother will risk her life to save the children in trouble so the mother in terms of physical might physical power and intelligence and in every way is superior to the child and especially when the child is newborn the, the baby is completely dependent on the mother's affection and the mother reciprocates that in the same way there's a huge difference between nrsimha who's so powerful and prahlad who's inherently not powerful he became powerful enough to resist hiranyakashipu but otherwise he was just a little boy powerful people don't make friends with little boys powerful people make friends if powerful people have friends in the true sense of the term what do you think you've seen powerful people they don't have friends they have people they associate with for their own for their own means and they there's a show of friendship and everyone's trying to manipulate everyone else that's called being a gentleman 
miserable. Rich people are miserable. You've seen rich people. They're miserable, are they not? More miserable than the average man. But the average man wants to be like that. He's a fool. And Rishim Hadev is very, very powerful. You might have thought that he could have made a compromise with Hiranyakashipu, who's also powerful. They could have made friends, like Russia and China. They're both powerful and uh, they can make friends with each other. They're, Russia doesn't make, well, Russia doesn't make friends with many, but... Uh, well, let's just see. Uh, just like when the... the pri I don't make this political, but like when the, the Prime Minister of the Maldives and the Prime Minister of India, they're neighbors, but it can't be the same because they're not on the same level. One is very powerful and the other is... It just happens to be a few islands sitting in the ocean, and that's why it's a country. But otherwise, what's the Maldives? It's tourist spots. Bollywood people go there for parties and shooting, and there's nothing very significant about it. So theoretically, Nirshingadev could have made a compromise with Hiranyakashipu. He didn't. He ripped him to pieces. He didn't rip Prahlad to pieces. Everyone else was afraid that Nrsingha is angry. And you know, what is that Narotam says? Krod ba. What is that? No, no, it's Krod ba ki ba na kore, something like that. In, in, uh, it's also in Prem Bhakti Chandrika. Ah. Krodha Krishna Dveshi Jane. But there's an Krode Kiba Nakare, something like that. In in anger, what will you not do? It's Nrsingadev was out of control. he when he speaks Bhagavad Gita, he tells Arjuna you have to control your mind, but he's he's he was just he was so angry. That's what he says, that anger is you you just it's very dangerous. So he'd lost control and he'd, he'd ripped Hiranyakashipu to pieces and then all the demons and the demigods thought, well, maybe we're next. They were afraid. They were all afraid. They were all afraid. Even Lakshmi was afraid. Prahlad wasn't afraid. Why? Is the cub is not afraid. The lioness, the cub may see the lioness right in front of the cub attacking a uh, jackal or a hyena or a, and having a fight, ripping it to pieces. But the cub doesn't become afraid. Other animals might become afraid and think that maybe I'm next. But Prahlad wasn't afraid. Because he knew that the Lord is my shelter. A commonly asked question is why didn't Nushimha, in the beginning, come and rip Hiranyakashipu to pieces. Why did he let Hiranyakashipu torture Prahlad so much? Why did he let it go on and on and on? There was so much harassment. On and on and on and on. Yeah. You should know everything. You are the great guru of scholars. Uh, it may be both. Hare Krishna. So, I'm philosophically speculating here, but... Um, yeah, I'm going to philosophically speculate also. Let's uh, hear what okay. your philosophical speculation is first. And we're expecting something good from you. There could be two things. Oh, true. That, that okay. um, um, to glorify Vlad Maharaj's ah. faith and um, Shakti, 
for you got me there. taking deep shelter of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also to give faith to devotees that they do have protection from ah, the but then why do, then again the question comes why not in the beginning well the thing is for us on our neophyte platform it's good for us to go through these hardships when, but not when, pralad though yeah but he set the state, you know, set the kind of a standard for us. Like, um, that's a very good answer. That we should know, tolerate like, so many difficulties thinking that the Lord will ultimately protect us. Like, um, in, uh, this is an easy uh, uh, reference to remember. 1.9.19. Um, the tribulations a devotee undergoes is another transcendental bhav with the Lord. Okay, great. We weren't expecting anything less from you. It's something like asking, why did Ram allow Sita to be kidnapped and not immediately kill Ravana? The answer could be, well, there'd be no Ramayana. <laughs> yeah, there would be the Ram, yeah, yeah, he killed Tataka and shot away Maricha and... Yeah, he got married, he could have lived in Ayodhya, and really the, the, the center of the story is, it, it, there's lots of action before that, but it really begins with Sita being kidnapped. And then what happens after Ravana being killed is, well, it, it goes on, but that's the central plot. Is that a good answer? Yeah, it is a good answer. It is a good answer. I'll praise myself. <laughs> it, <laughs> he comes to this world, Leela Koile Shubhishta. You're supposed to know everything. What's the, where does that come in the Gopinath song? Ashiya Prabhu Gopinath. Tumito Kripa Paraba, is it? Shivas. Huh? Jeeva Rakarane Ashiya Proponche Lila Koilo Bishubishta. Thank you. He comes to this world out of his mercy upon the devotees and demonstrate he has his pastimes. And the pastimes Shrinu Sukadam Shubadam Bhavasaram. By hearing the pastimes. The devotees become very happy and they become in this unshub, unauspic inauspicious material world, we get auspiciousness by hearing the pastimes. And he also enjoys his pastimes. And we also enjoy and we become enlivened and enlightened. So, we can also say Nrsimha Dev allowed Prahlad to be tortured on and on and on just for the sake of pastimes. That doesn't sound right, does it? Something wrong there. What's going on? Well, one thing we can think of is that Prahlad was Krishna Graha Grasta. He was haunted by the ghost of Krishna. Krishna Graha. Graha means a, a planet, particularly a planet that grabs your, grabs your mind and your very being. The, there are different planets, but that's, that's used in astrology, graha. And then you can also say Krish, uh, Krishna graha, grasta, means he's seized by the Krishna graha. He's, there's a similar term, bhuta grasta, which means to be taken by a ghost. And then you don't know what's going on. You're just oblivious. You, you, don't, you can... Pishachi paile jaina moti channa hoi. Maya 
Maya Grasta Jiver Hoy Shay Bhavu Doi. Someone who is in Maya is like a person who's been attacked and taken over by a witch or a ghost. So Prahlad was like that, but in a positive way. He was so absorbed in Krishna that he was oblivious to the world around him. Not completely oblivious, but he just didn't feel it. It didn't mean anything to him. The example in Gaur Leela is, of course, Haridash Thakur, who exhibited the same kind of tolerance as Prahlad. He was mercilessly beaten, but it didn't mean anything to him. And you were saying it would show the demonst demonstrate the the faithfulness and the the devotion of Prahlad. Prahlad in his prayers to Nishringhadev, after everyone's offered prayers, all the big people in the universe, all the celebrities came. Brahma, Shiva, the Rishis, the Vidyadharas, and Indra. And Nishringa sitting there with all covered in blood, with the intestines and Hiranyakas who dangling there dead and everyone's trying to cool him down, Lakshmi they're going there and saying some prayers and they're, they're, everyone said their prayers and he's still <laughs> he's still afraid and then Brahma said Prahlad you go And then Prahlad, in his prayers, said that you, among the many things he said, we have the leelas. It's, it's actually a very long leela, isn't it? It begins in the third canto with Jayan Vijay. And, and then again we have Hiranyaksha with uh, Varaha Dev. So it becomes a long le And it's, uh, it's spoken... Uh, uh, the, the whole seventh canto is in the context of the beginning of the where the, is the Supreme Lord partial. <coughs> then it, so then we but there, there are many many important philosophical instructions. The whole prayers of Prahlad after he was pushed forward by Brahma, and then even before that, which he spoke to Hiranyakashipu. Yan maitun adigriham edi sukham hitucham is a line that Srila Prabhupada often quoted, spoken by Prahlad to Hiranyakashipu, saying, the, the pleasures of householder life beginning with sex, of, of griham edi life, they're insignificant. You may think, well, how can Prahlad know? He's just a little boy. How can he know? Well, he heard from Narad. Well, Narad's also a brahmachari. <laughs> How can he know? He knows because he heard. Well, Narad heard from Brahma. Brahma, he's a householder. But that's not the reason. The reason is this is fact as given in Shastra. And you don't have to necessarily personally, directly experience in that life to understand it and even to realize it. Sometimes people say that, well, to appreciate Krishna's pastime with the gopis, you have to have sex with young women. You have to have romantic affairs. Otherwise, how can you understand it? That is not accepted by the followers of Rupa Goswami, who was a... Well, actually, he was a householder at one point, but uh, he was a great vairagi, great renunciant, and uh, that, that, that is not accepted, that you have to experience it, because the transcendental rasa of, of love, that is a natural attribute of the soul, whereas the perverse reflection of that 
that is actually an obstruction to entering into the activities of the, and the realizations of the soul. So anyway, one of the things that Prahlad said to Nrsimhadev is that you have sent me to this world to demonstrate the characteristics of a pure devotee. So, the fact that he was persecuted again and again and again and didn't become disturbed is demonstrating the characteristic of, of a pure devotee. That he remained fully uh, <coughs> faithful in, fully in love of, Nishim, of of Krishna, actually. That's another point. They say, well, Krishna only came 5,000 years ago and people didn't know him before that. But Prahlad came a long time before and we find him saying, Matiena Krishna. He knows about Krishna. He's Krishna Graha Grasta. So he demonstrated the, the, the characteristics of a pure devotee that although someone may, just like we find in Bhagavad Gita, in the first part of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks a lot about the Stita Dhimuni. He speaks about it specifically in the second chapter, but that's the characteristics of the Stita Dhimuni, one who's it, it, throughout the Gita, Krishna again and again talks about someone who's he's not attached to anything favorable. Na prashrish yet priyang prapya. No vijet prapya cha priyam. He's not enlivened when he gets something for his sense gratification. He's not distressed when he gets something which is adverse to his sense gratification. He's Equanimity, equilibrium of personality. And then we find in, in... So yeah, these are the characteristics of a person who is situated in transcendental. Yasmin stito nadu kena guru na api vichala yet. He's not disturbed. Even in, the, even in a situation where there's so much difficulty, he's not disturbed in the slightest. And then Krishna says more famously, Mang chayo vyabhicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samati tyaitan brahmabhuyaya kalpate. By performing devotional service, one automatically transcends the three modes of material nature. So that's in Bhagavad Gita. But that was demonstrated by Prahlad, this specific point. How even in great difficulty, one, who, someone who's actually a pure devotee, they're not disturbed in the slightest. And Krishna will ultimately help us. So we all have to go through difficulty. It's a, it's a lesson for all of us that Krishna will ultimately help us. Now we also see devotees in this world, they are killed. Recently, uh, they are killed by demons. Recently in Bangladesh, one of our young brahmacharis was, was killed. And in 1971, so many worshippers of Krishna in what was East Pakistan at the time were killed for the, for the sin of being a Hindu in the eye of the, the Pakistani Punjabi Patan forces. They didn't see who was a Vaishnava or no, they're just Hindus. And the, they're just, Hindu means should be killed. And I, I first went to Bangladesh in 1979 and sometimes people would ask us, why? Why would that happen? Why is that? There may be many reasons for that, but the devotee's attitude should be that whatever Krishna does, is for the good. He has a plan. He knows what is best for me. Mare Krishna Rakeke, Rake Krishna Mareke. Krishna can kill who he likes. He can protect who he likes. He has a plan for everyone. Recently, one of my disciples, a young man in his 30s, 
passed away here in Mayapur. He was very wonderful devotee. I'm sure it happens pretty much all the time here in Mayapur that devotees pass away. They come here to pass away. He was a young man and he was in very good transcendental consciousness. He could have gone on taking medication and maybe stretched out his life with difficulty for a little longer time, but he just decided to pass away and he was in very good consciousness. He was in very good consciousness before he came to the stage of knowing that he'd have to leave his body soon. He was a very good devotee. Why did Krishna take him away so soon? Krishna knows. Krishna has his plan for everyone. That should be the attitude of a devotee, which we find when even uh, Bhishma was speaking, that how is it that you, the, the Pandavas, are faultless, absolutely faultless, and, uh, and, uh, and above all, Krishna is your personal friend, still you had to go through so many difficulties. It's hard to understand. But, Bhishma says, we just have to accept. It's the plan of Krishna. He has a plan for everyone. The devotee's faith is that whatever happens, I accept that Krishna is doing what he knows to be best for me. And in that way, a devotee remains undisturbed. You're pointing like that? Nushimadev is going to come and rip me to pieces for going over time. Is that right? No. I'm not saying Nishinga Dev come for me. He comes from Prahlad. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that is an indication. There are a few things to say. There are so many things to say. It's unlimited. And go on talking and talking and talking. Does anyone have any points they want to make or questions or objections? We have a very learned presence here. You have to be careful what you say in Mayapur with all these Hare Krishna. great Wonder scholars. W wonderful present. class, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah, that's the normal thing people say. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's, it's become a ritual. Go and look, out, go and look up on this thesaurus. So, uh, anyway, sorry. I should be um, not, so, not so sarcastic. Like the Pandavas, very similar you know, to what the Pandavas went through, and then Queen Kunti was appreciative. Ah, yeah. Vipada, yeah. Say it, please. Vipada, shantuta, shashva, tutra, tutra, jagad guru. Bhavato darshanam yacha, apana bhava darshanam. May all those calamities happen again and again. Because when they happen, then you come to us, Krishna, and when we see you, we no longer see repeated birth and death. <laughs> Who's going to pray like that? <laughs> Who's going to pray like that? you you're praying to Krishna to get free from the difficulties, and when you get free from the difficulties, you say, give us some more. <laughs> Who will dare to pray like that? Can, can anyone re really dare from their heart to pray? Please, please, uh, what is that earlier in Kunti's prayers? That Vishan Mahagne Purushada Darshanata Satsapaya Vanava. All the things they had to go through, the... Uh, What's the first thing? Poison. 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 How did Kunti feel when she heard that Bhima had been poisoned? She was very happy he survived it, but... Oh, that was the, f the first real solid indication that there's rivalry between Bhima and Duryodhana and it's like boyish rivalry, but it's getting really serious. And we're not in the, politically, we're not in the advantageous situation because Duryodhana's father is the king. So Vishan, Mahagne, being the plan to burn them in the house of Laka. And then uh, the the. the Cannibal, Hidimba, in every case, and actually in all of this, it's Bhima getting poisoned with the house of the burning house. It's Bhima who just picks them all up and runs away with them all. 
and then uh, fighting Hidimba, the Rakshasa. That was the first one. And then Bhima killed him, and then there was again the, the other one in Egg Chakra. What was the name of that one? Bakasu. Bak another Bakasu. And it was Bhima. <laughs> I always laugh when I think of that. He's on the he's on the he's on the cart with all the food. He's eating all the food, <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> so yeah, so it was, it was for Kunti. It was just one. Pr As a mother, she, Bhima was having a he was enjoying himself like anything. It would have been really boring for Bhima if, it was just, if they hadn't had all those things. He was having a really good time, Bhima. But Kunti was in great anxiety. She felt it more than the others, we can imagine. But she's asking, give it again, give it again, give it again. Asat Sabha. Dropadis, the attempt to disrobe Dropadi. Bhima didn't really care. <laughs> Poison me with a cake? Yeah, it was a nice cake. Thanks a lot. I like cake. <laughs> Whoop, that's another way of trying to get us out of here. Okay. Hari Bowl, Jai Prabhupada, all guys to Srila Prabhupada. Job is done. We we'll finish that. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Sri Prahlad Maharaj ki jai, Sri Narasim Hadeva ki jai, Vanta Kalpa Tarubhyas Chakripa Sindhu Gavichapa Tita Anam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namo Namaha, Dante Nitai Chunakang Padayone Patikrit Vaja Ka Kushatame Taraham Bravimi He, Sadava Sakala Eva Vihaya Durat, Goranga Chandra Charne Kuritana Ranaha Parivada to Juno Yatata Tava Nana Makrona Vayang Vicharayama Hari Rasa Madhira Matati Mata Bhuvi Vilotama Nirtama Nirvishat